Welcome again to the Sligo Show with myself, Brendan Tierney. We're joined by a very special guest and a repeat guest. I think she may be the first repeat guest we've had, if I'm not mistaken. Sligo Olympian, uh, Mona McSharry. Mona, lovely to have you back on the show. And thanks for coming in again, second time. We'll have to have a hat trick, uh, a little special prize when you come on the third time or something like that. So welcome back to Sligo. I'm sure you're glad to be home for a while. Are you home for long or is it a little break or how long do you get to be well, here? Thank you for having me again. Um, yeah, I'm only back until the 14th, so a nice okay. week and a half. So. Very good. But the reason we asked you to come in is, and we'll get to more details about this later in the chat, so in a brief 10 seconds, tell us what are you doing this weekend, your big charity event? So on Friday at 5.30pm in Grange Car Park, I'm holding a charity duck race um, where you can win some great prizes and raising some money. Cool. Well, we'll get to all the details of that in a little while. But first, you've had a busy summer. I said you're home for a while and you said you only get a short break, so it's back, back to college, obviously. And uh, I see on your social media, there's no break from training at all. It's, do you ever take a week off? A month off? Is that possible? Yeah, I mean, I haven't. Um, Sean's is probably the first. I went back to Sean's at SFS. This is Sean Flannery, yes. Yeah. SFS, yeah. Um, yesterday, and he put me through my paces. But I haven't really done anything activity wise since European. So I did get a good week and a half off okay. of like working okay. out. So that was nice. So that was, yeah, you enjoyed that. And yeah. you're big, amazing. If you follow Mona on social media, you'll want to move to her home house in Grange because <laughs> the food is unbelievable. <laughs> There is restaurants and like it's just it's a, a absolute feasts all the time. So I'm sure you're enjoying all that at home yeah. as well. So as you said, you had a very busy summer with European Championships, and I mean I'm sure, and I know you're a very competitive person. Like, did you get to where you hoped? What were your targets leading into it? You know, how did it all work out in your opinion? What, what were we happy or not? Yeah, I mean I I think the best way to put it is I made steps. I took mm. steps forward, but maybe not as many steps as I'd wanted. So um, the goals that I'd set my, for myself, I probably didn't hit. Okay. Um, just as I didn't swim just as well as I had hoped, but again, I swam better than I ever have at Europeans. So that's you okay. know that's still a positive. Yeah. I just I kind of hope that I'd be a little bit further ahead. Okay. But you know the line's not linear, and we're not constantly moving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important to take that into and consideration it's such too. And tiny margins too. So another just on another day, it just it just yeah. goes your way like yeah. exactly. Uh, and I mean three finals in one week. Uh, was that a plan? Did you think that would happen? when it happened? We were like oh my God, this is going to be really hard. Or were you like, this is fine, well, you, this, is, this is okay? Yeah, I mean, the way they set it up is that like nothing's ever overlapping. So it's normally okay. You know, you do, if you are making finals, you're normally going for whatever, six days straight without a break. So okay. it is tough mentally like that, but it's not that you'd ever have multiple swims on a day. So, okay. you know, I kind of did anticipate to make at least... I think the 50 final was probably the most surprising for me. Oh, okay. okay. So that's a little highlight then, I suppose. You're, yeah. you're just always uh, moving up as you go along and, yeah. and, and reaching new targets. So again, as I said, uh, look, it's best to look at all that side of things. Now we're going back to the main reason you're here. So your charity <laughs> event. So you're home for a break, but you decided, hmm, I don't like doing nothing. So you're having this duck race. So it's a charity duck race. Can you tell us more about the charities you've chosen and are they special to you in any way or any reason you chose them? Yeah, I mean, I think when I sat down first and thought about charities that I wanted to pick, I immediately thought of some sort of dog charity because I know that like I have a rescue dog at home. I'm very passionate about rescuing animals and that's probably a line of work I want to work in in the future. Okay. So I reached out to someone I know who works in that area and she said that um, Husky Rescue Ireland is a charity that does great work and they probably don't get as much funding as they need and basically they help dogs that are classed more as can be aggressive or maybe it's their last chance um, okay. and they kind of give them a place to stay or like find them a new home uh, which you know hits home for me too is because I have a pit bull in America and she yeah. can be classed as quite an aggressive yeah, dog yeah, too yeah. and I mean she's a cuddly bear yeah she yeah, wouldn't yeah. hurt a fly um, <laughs> So that's one of the charities. And then the other one is Jigsaw, which is a mental health charity. And again, like I think mental health is something that almost everyone is going to struggle with at some point in their mm -hmm. life. And as an athlete, it's a huge part in swimming well and performing well and you know, feeling good. And so that was the other one that I wanted to focus yeah. on. And it too. is more focused on youth, isn't it, uh, Jigsaw? Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so that's uh, very admirable of you. So that's great to people know who they're going to be giving their money to. So uh, Duck Race is quite a simple event. So how do people buy a duck or how can they donate? Yeah, so you can donate. I've set up a GoFundMe and I have it linked in my Instagram bio. I also post it on Facebook and Twitter. So you should be able to find it. And yeah, we'll put it on the links this video as well for you. So yes, watching, exactly. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can donate as much as you want. There's uh, no minimum. Um, and then if you do donate, you're also in with a chance to win one of three. I've put together some 
gifts, like prizes, like swim, swim related stuff, yeah. um, swimsuits, hats, goggles, all the essentials. Inflatable armbands. Yeah, anything ducks. you need. <laughs> and some Irish gear that I've signed, some Irish hats, stuff like that. Okay. Just so it is, you know, you can in with a chance to win something too. Good. Which well, is I mean, it sounds fun. like a bit of fun. It's in the park, yeah. it's family friendly, it's a lovely exactly. open space down there. So mm-hmm. it's a great evening out. Yeah. And as I said, like brilliant memorabilia to have, you know what I mean? These could be historic down the line yeah. as well, be more, yeah. more valuable. So. <laughs> well done, a fair play. Uh, so look at, Thanks again for joining us. We no said problem. we wouldn't keep you too long. We knew you were supposed to go to the gym earlier, then you cancelled that. <laughs> she's got a wonderful new tattoo. So uh, when you meet Mo, I've never seen anyone with a tattoo uh, of a fish in the rear. It looks absolutely amazing. So when you meet Mona in Grange Park on Friday at half five. Five thirty, yeah. Five thirty, and you can come over and have a chat with you. You're, yes, you're, exactly. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Go and yeah. say hi. If yeah. lots of kids out there, probably love to see you. So go and check out the tattoo as well. So check out Mona's Instagram if you want to donate, and we'll have the link here in the video. Mona, thanks a million. The best of luck in the future. By the way, what's what's the next year like actually? I mean, to say is there any big kind of events coming along yeah we've got um college season starting again and that's okay. going to go till march and then we have qualification for worlds in the summer is in april and then worlds is on in japan in july and that's going to ah. be pre-validation for the olympics so we're already talking about the olympics again so for that excuse the ignorance like, so that means if you get a certain time there are you in the olympics then you no, know I, then no i've pre-validated up. so i've kind of it's tricky process i'll mm. still have to swim the following april at um trials okay. but the time i have to swim at that trials is then easier if i've already pre-validated ah, okay. so there puts a bit of pressure off me good yeah. good girl. it's a pity it doesn't seem to get as it, like the it was hard to watch your races it was all online and finding yeah. links and that and hopefully they show more <laughs> mainstream easier, tv yeah, like yeah because yeah, all the athletics is on so hopefully the anyone watching this interest or in rt or whatever <laughs> can you show more of the swimming as well <laughs> Even online on RT, you know, yeah. I found it hard to find. But uh, listen, yeah. the best of luck. Thanks so much for coming in and the best of luck at your event. All Thank right. you so much. <laughs> so it's Mona. She's having her duck race on this Friday in Grange. So do call along. It'll be a lovely day for family and friends and it's all for good causes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all again next time. So if you liked what you just seen, Don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel here. We have loads of great interviews from a load of really interesting people over the series. And if you're on social media, which I'm sure loads of you are, we are on Instagram and Facebook, so give us a follow there.